Okay, next let's see how this permutation of multivariate analysis of variance actually works. And there's actually a very easy to understand version uh, that I explained to you that's a multiple response permutation procedure. And the permutational multivariate analysis of variances works on the same principle, but it's more complicated because it allows for factorial designs and interactions. So this one is just a single factor uh, analysis of variance equivalent. And the other thing I want to do in this video is to give you a bit more systematic guidance on how to follow up a multivariate analysis of variance with univariate and pairwise tests. So let's take a look how this distance-based uh, non-parametric maneuver procedure works. And um, it works a little bit differently than um, normal multivariate analysis of variance or ANOVA for that matter. So I'm actually not working with the variances among the means and the variances within the means. Um, I'm directly working with the data and that does have some advantages. Uh, so I don't really care how my data is distributed. So these distributions can be anything. They can differ between my groups. They can be different in size, different in shape. Um, so what I'm doing instead, I'm, work with, I'm working with distances of data points directly. So I'm comparing distances within groups and distances between uh, groups, but distances between points within different groups. And uh, I'm still calculating signal to noise ratios. And let's see how that works. So if you think of uh, how your data table looks like um, in, in such an experiment, it would be, I would have different treatments, I would have uh, different rows with observations. And um, instead of having one variable, I have many variables. So uh, let's say these are all different species. We have five different species here. We calculate the frequencies. And I can visualize this in an ordination, uh, let's say an NMDS with x1 and x2. And now I could calculate distances within these clusters here or within my groups, within my treatments. And I can calculate also distances from each point to every other point uh, between my treatments. So if I were to do this, um, let's, see, let's say these are frequency measures and I'm just calculating Euclidean distances. Um, so my distances within, so between that red point and that other red point in multivariate space, uh, they will be smaller than my distances between. So if I do all these combinations, so first with a second, first with a third, first with a second, and so on. And I also do the same for all the distances between that are larger. Um, I can calculate an average distance for both distances within and distances between. So I'm just making these numbers up, but let's assume that my distances between are 10 times larger than my distances within on average. That would give me a signal to noise ratio of 10. Um, so that's step one. Um, I do have a signal to noise ratio, but now I need something to compare that to, right? So I don't have that. Um, I don't have an F distribution uh, to see what the probability is that I get a bigger signal to noise ratio just by random chance. So I have to kind of create my own distribution of that particular statistic here that we calculated if there was no treatment effect. So I need a distribution of that statistic. What would it be if we had no treatment effect? So if this was just all these differences, if these were just all by random chance. So ultimately we want a p-value, right? So we want to know what's the chances of getting a signal to noise ratio as big or bigger than 10 just by random chance. And for that, I need to know, you know, how would that d be distributed if there was indeed no treatment effect. Well, with computers, I can do that. So what I do is I'm going to shuffle uh, my treatment effects here. So let's say we put an A here, another A there, another A there, and then my Bs go here and there and there, and my Cs go here. So now if I were to redo this uh, distance calculation, um, I will likely get my within and between distances being roughly the same. So it's not going to be exactly the same, 
maybe it's going to be uh, you know 35 and and 41 or something like that and so my signal to noise ratio will be around one but not exactly one so what i can do with this value i can plot it here in a histogram um, so maybe it's just a little bit larger than one so maybe that value sits here this is my observed signal to noise ratio here uh, that is uh, farther out and um, <clears throat> So what I do next is I'm going to do this again. So I'm going to erase this. And I'm going to assign my uh, treatments again randomly. So maybe one here, one there, and one there. And then my C's are here, and my B's are here, just a random assignment, and I do the same procedure again. I calculate all the distances within, all the distances between. I get a new signal to noise ratio for the case where my where I don't actually have any uh, treatment effects. And maybe in this case, uh, it was a value that's a little lower than one, so that's possible as well. And so I build my uh, distribution here. Um, uh, as I go, uh, maybe sometimes I also get bigger values just by random chance, and so I can build this up. If I do this, let's say, uh, 5,000 times, I eventually get a distribution of my randomly generated D values. And if, uh, you know, if things, if you, if you do things many times, um, it's very possible that just by random chance, occasionally I may even get a signal-to-noise ratio from you know the shuffle treatment effects that's even bigger than the one that i observed now and that's now the um, basis for calculating p-values so i'm actually i can actually read the p-values right off that distribution that custom distribution that i make that's equivalent to an f distribution except it's really made from the particular data that you have and um, so perhaps i have uh, 4900 21 values that are below my 10 uh, that I observed and 79 above and um, so that would give me a p-value of 0 0.0158 79 out of 5000 permutations is the probability of getting a d statistic larger than the observed one just by random chance right remember I each time I generated those this was just a random permutation so that's very cool I can literally count out uh, what the p-value is and uh, so there's no distributions to be fitted, um, but it works just as well as the analysis of variance or a maneuver approach. So that ratio of variances uh, and the under the assumption of normality uh, gives you almost exactly the same p-value every single time. Now, one thing you have to keep in mind that your smallest p-value in this permutation maneuver is limited by the number of permutations. So if you only run 20 permutations, one over 20, 0 0.05 is the smallest p-value that you can possibly get. So crank that number up. Uh, 10,000 is a good value. So this gives you a p-value of uh, 0 0.001, uh, one out of that. So this will give you the smallest non-zero p-value that would be reported. So you don't usually care to quantify it if it's even smaller than that. So once you're done uh, with the multivariate analysis of variance, there are a number of ways to follow that up. And uh, typically the first one that you're interested in doing is a follow-up still at, mo at the multivariate level with pairwise comparisons among your groups. So we're not going to univariate detail yet. We're just asking which of the groups are actually significant different from each other. So MANOVA doesn't tell you that. It just tells you there's a sum effect. But usually you want to know whether there's a treatment effect between the control and A, between the control and B, and between A and B perhaps as well. So if you have three treatments, you generally like to do all possible combinations and see which groups are significantly different from each other. That works very similarly to univariate pairwise comparisons. Um, you have to do an adjustment for multiple inference. And uh, I'm, I'm not going into this too much because these are well-established univariate statistics methods. Um, I'll link a couple of additional videos if you're not familiar with this at the end. And you can run this very much like a 
normal analysis of variance. So you basically, instead of one variable as your dependent variable, you have a whole table of measurements here. So your multiple species, for example, um, you have a group variable, in this case, soil amendments, and you have to pick a distance. So that distance measure that we used uh, to calculate our signal to noise ratio, um, that can be any distance, uh, Euclidean or Bray Curtis, depending on your data, what makes sense. So that is the multiple response permutation procedure implemented in R. That's the one that I explained above. And the permutational maneuver, where you can actually have uh, additive effects or even interactions, uh, that's implemented with the Adonis procedure of the Wegen package. And it, it, you write it just like a linear model. There's also a procedure to do multivariate pairwise uh, comparisons. And that's actually a little different than what you would normally do in ANOVA. So this one actually just subsets your data and uh, does pairwise comparisons. Then you repeat the thing uh, for B and C and for A and C subsets. And you know this package does it for you here, so you don't have to do it manually. Um, and you have to do an adjustment for multiple inference, which you can specify as well. So lastly, I'm going to go through some analysis options and decision diagrams. So first of all, you have the option between multiple response permutation procedure, permutation maneuver, or uh, rotation-based maneuver. And uh, that depends a little bit on your data. So if your data is more or less normally distributed, and it doesn't have too many variables, uh, then you can do a rotation-based maneuver. But I would recommend, even if it's parametric, go to the uh, permanover side here. They can handle high dimensional data sets better, get you exactly the same p-value as the MANOVA. There's no reason uh, to do this one. So use uh, the Adonis or a similar package that does uh, permutational uh, MANOVA. That's usually the best choice. So this one works also just as well, but it can't handle multiple factors at the same time. So once you have a significant result here, uh, you do pairwise multivariate testing, and I showed you the uh, follow-up procedure there above. That is not available for a multivariate analysis of variance, so you have to subset the data sets manually. That's another reason why you want to use this one here. And so once you have your pairwise testing in multivariate space done, uh, you may also want to drill down to individual variables or summary variables and see what drives your statistical differences between groups are these individ particular individual variables. And um, so in the univariate space, uh, these are my recommendations on how to proceed. So if you have non-parametric data, uh, you can use a per permutational analysis of variance. But um, I don't actually recommend that one. I recommend to just ignore the uh, assumptions, <laughs> you can safely do this because analysis of variance is extremely robust against the violation of assumptions. So you can try that out uh, if you run a permutational ANOVA on non-normally distributed data and uh, regular ANOVA, you always get the same p-value. Uh, but this one has better follow-up choices, so you can do pairwise testing much more easily, which you can't here. So uh, again, here you would have to do subsets of data sets. Uh, so this is a bit tedious here, and that's why I don't recommend it in this case to go on the left side here. So just run the regular ANOVA and then follow that up with effect size statistics. So what, what this differentiates from the pair, pairwise testing is that I actually disentangle the effect size and the sample size as causes of my p-value. So usually you want to, you don't just want to know whether two treatments are significantly different, but by how much. So that, that's key information. And in the lab, I have, um, I have some examples on how to do this. So with that, uh, download the lab six and the corresponding data. And uh, I do walk you through the univariate follow-ups, but in a sort of compressed format, because uh, it's a multivariate class and I have to assume that you know how you do univariate analysis. I can't uh, teach that in full detail. But if you want to specifically f uh, get some more information on how this pairwise testing works and why I have to do adjustments for multiple inference and how the effect size statistic works, um, there are two videos of the universe statistics class that you can take a look at.